Mosby's Raiders is a tactical solitaire game that simulates the guerrilla war waged by John Singleton Mosby and his band of partisan rangers against the Union Army in Northern Virginia during the American Civil War. The game attempts to show that an effective guerrilla war requires little manpower or resources to wage, but a great deal of both to defeat. The more infamous Mosby and his band become, the more effective they were in their activities. Ultimately, Mosby became a living legend. So says the intro paragraph in the rulebook, and there's really not a better way of summarizing this game into a single paragraph. You play as Mosby and his band, looking to raise hell and cause as much damage to the Union war effort as possible in order to relieve pressure on rebel forces. In this Our View series, I'll discuss this 1985 Victory Games title and do a full playthrough as well. I hope you'll watch, like, and subscribe, and even, maybe even leave a comment. Here is the full map in all its 1985 glory. There's helpful charts to the right, which will be frequently looked at, status tracks along the top, and lots going on throughout the rest of the map. Now let's take a closer look at what's going on up here at the top of the map. In the upper right corner, you have two very important tracks, the Notoriety track and the Performance Point track. The object of the game is for you to increase your notoriety to 9 or higher by the game's end. To do this, you earn performance points by doing naughty things to the invading carpetbaggers, which are listed here in the Performance and Awareness Summary table. And over here to the left in the upper left part of the game map are several other important tracks. There's the Game Turn track, which as you can see shows the game lasts for a total of 8 turns. Now that might not seem like a lot, but the game can potentially run for a while. It can also end prematurely with Mosby dead in a gutter somewhere too. The game's notoriety system is directly related to the game turn. You see, part of the housekeeping phase at the end of each turn requires that you have a notoriety that's equal to or greater than the current game turn number. That won't be much of a problem at first, but afterwards it can be a problem, especially if you're not aggressive enough or the game system just hates you. The game also has a Union Awareness track. The higher the Union Awareness, the harder it is for you to do bad things to the Blue Bellies. Mosby's notoriety, as you can see, is directly related to where this sits on the track. Also, many actions you perform can cause this track to increase during a game turn. And over here, the Union Reinforcement track is where all the lovely Union Reinforcements await their turn to come out and play Guerrilla Warfare with you. As your notoriety goes up, so too does the number of Union units in the game. Your good deeds, well for the South anyway, never go unpunished in this game. We'll get into the rest of this as I play through the game, but for now let me show you a couple of other things regarding the map. The circles represent areas that units can occupy. They can travel along black lines, which are roads, and red lines, which are pikes. The yellow lines are rail lines and cannot be moved along, but they can be demolished within spaces. At least, they can be demolished within Union line spaces. And that's what the blue circles are. Everything north and east of these are Union territory. However, these lines can actually expand on, during the game based on random events. The gray circles are Mosby's Confederacy, which represent a bastion for him and his raiders and also where Mosby's marker begins each turn. It's also a target for the Bluecoats, and you can lose the game if each space is devastated and or occupied by Union combat units. The hexagons represent a large Union force. Now, each circle normally in Union lines holds just one unit, but large Union force spaces are considered to have an unlimited source of Union troops, and therefore are very dangerous. That's about it for the basics, so let's get into the game. The start of each turn is begun with the preparation sequence. The first step within that is to place Union units into our container, which is shown here. The at start Union units are already in place here, and since our notoriety is only a measly one, for now anyway, we don't add any more Union units to the mix. Next, we determine Union awareness. Our notoriety of one means Union awareness is at a one also. Next, we place Mosby in Mosby's Confederacy. There are 16 spaces that we can choose from at start. Now, is it a big deal where we put him? Well, not really, but as the game progresses, more of these spaces will either be devastated or occupied by Union combat units, so our choices are going to get slimmer. 
There could also be a small chance that a Union unit will invite itself into whatever space we choose to start in. Hopefully that won't happen, but for the time being, I'm going to place them right here in Hopewell. Next in the process is for us to move Union units that are outside of Union lines, but as there are none anywhere on the map yet, we can totally skip this step. Next, we come to the part where we recruit raiders for Mosby's gang. Now, the recruitment table over here at the far right will tell us exactly how many raider strength points we're going to get for the coming turn. Each strength point is roughly 25 men, I believe. From what you can see here, Mosby's notoriety of one only allows us to recruit a bare bones detachment. Potentially, we might not even get any strength points at all if we roll a one. Well, fortunately, I roll a five, so we get one strength point. I add that to the Raider strength box, and we are ready to move on. Now we pick our action cards. These are benefits that we can use during the coming turn. We can't hold on to them turn by turn unless they're specifically labeled as hold cards. Otherwise, they're discarded at the end of the turn if they're not used. Checking the recruitment table, we find that we can draw three action cards because Mosby is currently healthy. Let's draw them now. The first is local information, which lets us reveal a union unit in an adjacent space without having to conduct a probe action. This will make more sense in a moment. Next, we have spur horses, which gives us one extra space of movement during rounds, and we just might need that if the union's coming after us. Finally, we have another local information card. Well, that's unusual, but it's not unheard of to have two of the same action cards. Now for the final step in the preparation sequence, drawing random event cards. To do that, I roll one die and get a three, so we draw three random event cards. Now hopefully we'll get some good ones to start the game off with. The first one is Restore Mosby's Confederacy. Well, that's a good card to get later in the game. Right now, not so much, because it removes all devastation markers in Mosby's Confederacy, and since there aren't any, we can ignore this. Next, we have Restore All Bridges. That's another one we can ignore, because no bridges have been destroyed yet. Well, yet, I say. That's a really popular target. Another good card that would have been better to get later in the game. And finally, we have, oh great, Union Sweep. Well, fortunately, a quick glance shows that none of these listed locations are in Hopewell, so we've avoided a bullet in that regard. So the die roll is a 2, and we place a devastated marker in Piedmont Station, along with a Union Combat Unit. And it just so happens we draw a 4-strength combat unit, which is one of the stronger ones at start, and doesn't matter, it's way out of our league right now anyway, so I can't do anything about them right now. With that, the first space in Mosby's Confederacy is wiped out, and if the rest of them are destroyed, the game is over for us. Now, the real fun begins, because if a Union unit is placed in Mosby's Confederacy on a sweep like this, and he's placed in Mosby's space, combat and rounds begin immediately. But since he's not in Mosby's space, he gets to move three spaces at random. If he enters a space in Mosby's Confederacy, as he moves along, he'll automatically devastate it. And there's also a chance he'll enter our space and really do some damage to us when we go into combat. So let's see what happens. Okay, first I roll a 2. Random movement is controlled by the little number you can see next to the line coming out of the space. It's a number 1. You roll, then you count clockwise from that number until you reach the number rolled. So this means this Union Jackal moves into p and devastates it. Next, I roll a 6, which is fortunate as it means he travels back the way he came from to Piedmont Station. I guess he just had something against places named Piedmont. Finally, I roll a 3, and it looks like they're going to move right out of Mosby's Confederacy to Front Royal. Or Front Royal. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Now that we're done with random events, it's time to go into Mosby's operations.